The subscapularis muscle arises from the inner or medial edge of the scapula in the front and it runs across the front of the scapula in between the scapula and the ribs. It then curves around the front of the humerus and attaches to the lesser tubercle on the humerus which is to the side and the front of the humerus here. And the important thing about this is that when the subscapularis contracts it pulls the head of the humerus in to the glenoid fossa. So it becomes an incredibly important stabilizer of the head of the humerus. The deltoid muscle, which is your big power muscle running out on the outside, as it contracts to pull the arm outwards, to abduct the arm, as it contracts it would tend to pull the head of the humerus upwards and therefore as the humerus moved out it impinges in under the, so under the acromion here. However, if the subscapularis contracts first, it will pull the humerus inwards and backwards, therefore helping stabilize the humerus together with the supraspinatus muscle and together what they do is they stabilize the head of the humerus so that you are able to make this movement without the greater tubercle impinging underneath the acromion. So it has this very important stabilizing factor. The second thing it does is when it contracts it will tend to pull the outside of the humerus in towards the body and therefore internally rotate your arm. This is a movement we do often. We hold something and we pull it across our body. And so this, the subscapularis happens to be stronger than the other muscles in the rotator cuff. And so this function is actually pretty important. Trigger points occur in the subscapularis and they're relatively common. Uh, you'll find there's three trigger points here. When the trigger points are active they set off a pain which is concentrated primarily over the back of the joint. So it occurs over the upper part of the, uh, the back of the um, arm uh, and extends a little bit over the scapula. When it becomes more active the pain will then spread immediately over the whole to cover the whole scapula a little bit down the arm and also may spread to the front of the shoulder here and down the inside of the upper arm in this pattern. So it's a slightly complex pattern but remember that the primary pain area is over the back of the shoulder. There are two major painful presentations of the shoulder. The first is rotator cuff injuries which is by far the more common and the second is an adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder. The way that clinicians usually uh, are able to distinguish between the two is one physical sign in particular and that is that in adhesive capsulitis there is loss of external rotation of the shoulder. So in a rotator cuff problem you may have restriction and pain in all other movements but normally you should be able to externally rotate your shoulder quite comfortably. This is true except if there are trigger points in the subscapularis tendon. So if somebody presents with a painful shoulder and restriction in all movements including external rotation, 
What the astute clinician should do is check for trigger points in the subscapularis muscle. If they are present, you should then release those trigger points. If the shoulder regains an excellent range of movement in external rotation, then that was the primary problem. If it doesn't really change, then you're dealing with a, an adhesive capsulitis and you have to treat it as such.